To make a burlap mask, the first thing you need is a piece of burlap. The only piece I've got is this old sack here. So I'll take it, cut all the seams out of it, and this will be the piece of burlap that I use. Next I take the piece of burlap and make sure it fits over top of the head form that I have. Looks like this is going to work perfectly. Once I bunch it in around the neck and create the mask, I'll have just enough to make this work. I prep the head form by wrapping it in plastic wrap. This will make the cleanup after the paper mache process a whole lot easier. Next we make our paper mache mixture. This is nothing more than glue and water. We have our paper towel strips. We will dip them in the glue and water and then lay them out on the head form. The reason I do it this way is to create structure underneath the burlap mask. This ensures that the cloth burlap will hold a permanent facial form when the mask is complete. I've covered the head form in the paper mache way more than I need to, but I'd rather have more than less. It can always be cut away later. Now it's time to get the burlap. One of the most important parts of this process is to attach the burlap while the paper mache is still wet. That way it'll begin to take the form of the head and stick in place much better. Once the burlap is somewhat in place, I take a cord and tie it around the neck to hold it tight and then use the remaining paper mache mixture to paint on top of the burlap. Again, this will help create structure. Once everything is formed the best I can, I take some sandbag weights, place it over the face, and then let it dry overnight. Once everything has dried overnight, I remove the sandbags and the cord, and there we go. Everything seems to be holding shape perfectly. In the back corner of my shop, I found this old bucket of latex paint. This will work to give me even more structure and give me the base color that I want for this mask. This part of the process is fairly simple. You just take the latex paint and completely cover the burlap mask. All you have to worry about covering is what you're going to be keeping, so you don't need to go all the way down to the very end of the burlap. Remember, we're going to be cutting off a lot of the edge work. Other than that, it doesn't have to be pretty. You just want that layer of latex paint to create a top structure to this mask and, in this case, give it the color that I need. Once the mask is completely covered, I let this dry for another 24 hours. It's important to remember that projects like this take time, so don't wait to the last minute to create your mask. With the drying done, it's time to sketch in the design for this particular mask. What I'm doing here is creating a little bit of a X on the top and working around the mouth for a detail I'm going to add later. Once all my pencil marks are etched in, I go ahead and break out some maroon paint and go ahead and do my underlayment for the darker spots of the mask. Don't worry, this is not what the finished product is going to look like. Time to start making this white mask look old. So for that, I'm going to take some black craft paint, like this, an old spray bottle, like this, put some water in the spray bottle, put some paint in the water, and then just mix it up. This is going to create an easily sprayable black wash that will give the mask an aged look. Again, once this step is complete, you're going to want to give this ample time to dry. Next, I take some very diluted black paint and begin to paint in around the eye sockets. Then I'll dab off all the excess. I repeat this process a couple times. This will give the eyes a nice deep set appearance. I don't feel like the black wash gave this mask enough of an aged look, so now I'm going over it very lightly with some regular old black spray paint. After another long period of drying, this is what I've got. At this point, I think the mask is coming along nicely. I still have a lot of work to do, but we're getting there. I think it's time to get this thing broke off of the mold. This is where that plastic wrap comes in very handy. It makes breaking the mask from the mold fairly simple. 
And here you can see that we've got a lot of extra we're going to have to cut away. I'll start by cutting away all the excess paper mache, and then when I get that to the point that I want it, I'll begin to cut away all the excess burlap. There we go. To make this mask usable and not just for decorative purposes, you're going to have to come in here behind the eye sockets and scrape away a little bit of the paper mache. This will allow you to see through the burlap and you won't be able to tell from the outside. Now it's time for some more aging techniques and here I'm using some steel wool to rough up the paint and dull it out a little bit. Just go over any section you feel like you need to. I focused on the red mark on the forehead. I did a trial fit on this mask and then realized that this back flap here was way too loose and didn't hang the way that I wanted it to. So I had to devise a way to keep this together. And by devise a way, I mean I just added a snap back here to the back. I'll hide that with some white paint. You'll never see it. Now the mask will gather at the neck exactly the way that I want it to. Lastly, I painted over the red section of the mouth and then went through the entire aging process just for that section. That allowed me to keep the red tinge that I wanted underneath the white that appeared to be in the design images that I was using as a reference. Now let's take this thing outside and see what it looks like in real light. This is the point of the video that I have to confess, I have never seen Fear Street and had no idea who the Nightwing Killer was prior to making this mask. I'd like to give a shout out to YouTube user JustJustJ for giving me this mask idea. This project's complete and this is my interpretation of the Nightwing Killer mask from Fear Street. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas of how to make your own mask. And if it did, well, you know what to do. And maybe, just maybe, I'll see you on the next video. If you enjoy videos about the randomness of our amazing world, consider clicking on the globe to subscribe. Or maybe checking out one of the other videos right here.